بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us My beloved brothers and sisters We have a lot to learn from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum The companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we need to bear in mind that these companions were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He chose them for many reasons and divinely he obviously knows that there will be rules and regulations that will be sent down over a period of 23 years. And a strong crop of men whose faith is solid are needed in order to set the first example. You and I know that we are not as strong as our fathers and our grandfathers in terms of dedication, in most cases, in terms of the physical effort they put into what they wanted to achieve in terms of so many other things. But we have something to follow. We have, for example, a path to tread upon, especially when we've seen that they are successful. So the most successful of all the Muslimin from the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were indeed the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. For example, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he was known as Afdalu man masha ala al-ardi ba'd al-anbiya. The best of those to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was known as the one who was next. The same applies. Next is Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu and Ali. Ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Now, there must have been something special about these men. You and I were not chosen, unfortunately, or fortunately, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on earth. But if we follow some rules, regulations, and a certain path, we are guaranteed companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. Al-mar'u ma'a man ahabba. The Prophet ﷺ once told one of his companions that a person shall be with whom he loves. So if you really and truly love Muhammad ﷺ, it is not just a mere lip service. It is way beyond that. You need to show it by following the commands that he brought to us that came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you can actually prove, I really love him. How do you prove your love for him? You're actually proving it because when he said, you have to get up for salah, you fulfill it in this way, you do your wudu in this way, you dress in this way, you don't do this, you don't eat this, you don't talk in this way, etc. We are the first people who should be adopting it. That's a sign of love, true love. Even haram love on earth today, if a lover were to say, I'd like you to do this, you really love them, you might even, may Allah forgive us, you might even break the law to make them happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That is haram, that is an example I'm giving only because we can understand it sometimes. But when it comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa there is a guarantee of purity and success. When the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa knew that this is the man Allah chose to be the Nabi, they were convinced those who were closest to him were convinced that this is a fact. He's the best from amongst us. He's the most truthful from amongst us. He's the most trustworthy from amongst us. Nobody compares. Nobody can compete. Therefore, people like Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, not only did they immediately accept the call when he says, I am a messenger of Allah. Not only did they immediately accept the call, they went out to encourage others and facilitate for others their entry into Islam. Khabbab ibn al-Arat radiallahu anhu and a lot of the people of the first crop who convinced them. According to the narrations, it was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu who went to them quietly. You know what? This man is right. You better follow what he is saying. Come benefit, come and listen, come and see, come and ask questions, etc., etc. Now, while we're listening to all of this, we too need to be vehicles, just like the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, to promote what is right, to encourage people to come to the masjid, come to a program wherein, for example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is going to be remembered, his sunnah is going to be taught, the do's and don'ts of Islam are going to be mentioned. Come and listen. You know why? In our case, 
even if you are not so strong, maybe the man or the woman whom you encouraged might become stronger than you. And guess what? You get a full reward of everything they do because you directed them. Subhanallah, subhanallah. That is the amazing gift of Allah. This is why I never become tired to encourage people. You know what? There's a beautiful talk. Let's go and listen to it. Come, let's go. Come on. It's only going to be 20 minutes. They won't take too long. I'm just giving you an example, but I want to tell you the benefit is immense and intense. Where do we learn it from? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. Those who were actually uh, what we term mahroom, mahroom means they were prevented by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the goodness. They were the ones who turned people away. They were also there. Some of the non-Muslims, the disbelievers, they used to go and they used to harm the people who used to come to listen to the good. What happened to them? We don't say radiallahu anhu next to their names. When you say Abu Lahab, when you say Abu Jahl, do you ever say anything besides either silence or either may Allah give him what he deserves. May Allah grant him whatever he deserves. We need to choose. I need to choose. Do I encourage people or do I discourage people? That's all. The bare minimum is if you can neither encourage, well obviously that's a loss. And if you haven't discouraged, then the minimum is you are quiet. You remain silent in the sense that you've lost. You know, when a business opportunity comes in front of you and people tell you, listen, there's a business opportunity right here. You are going to be earning $10,000 a week with this clean profit in dollars. Subhanallah. What will happen? You won't want that chance to be taken by someone else, especially if it's your field, your business, you know it, etc. You're going to grab it. You're going to thank the people. They become close to you. They become your friends. They become your business partners. Even if they follow a totally different faith, your link with them becomes solid and strong. For what? For something you may never be spending in your life. Do you realize this? But the deal with Allah is far greater than just the $10,000. If you encouraged one person to come for salah, that one salah could save your adab and your punishment in the grave, which had you had a billion dollars to pay in order to be saved from, you would have paid it. That's in the Quran. The Quran says, those who have oppressed. وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا وَمِثْلَهُ مَعَهُ لِيَفْتَدُوا بِهِ مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَا تُقُبِّلَ مِنْهُمْ Those who have oppressed themselves, had they had all the riches and the merchandise and whatever the earth had contained multiplied in order to save themselves from the punishment of the day of judgment, if they could give it ransom, it would still not be accepted from them too late. So where do we get the benefit from? Why was Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu known as the best? Why? Because he helped so many people see the goodness and he brought it to them and he paid for them to come into the deen. For example, Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu, he was a solid person. He came into the deen obviously with the help of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and the others. He was so strong. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu went to his master and paid him off to buy the slave, not for his own benefit, for the sake of Allah. This is a free man. When he makes salah without a worry, I will get the reward. Subhanallah. Look at this. It's, a, it's an amazing point that we need to think about to, to help someone by alleviating their worry so that they can worship Allah in a better way is an act of worship similar to that of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Where are we? Where are the Sahaba radiallahu anhum? Similarly, my beloved brothers and dearest listeners, let me explain something very, very interesting regarding the association of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with the Quran. The Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years. Every time rules and regulations came, it strengthened them. In the Meccan period, or most of the verses, if not all of them, were connected to belief. Belief in the hereafter, the punishment, how the grave is going to be, what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen, the angels that exist, and the fact that they don't miss anything, the fact that you believe in Allah, you believe in the last day, you believe in good and bad coming from Allah. All this was revealed in Makkah al Mukarramah. When the verses came down, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum was strengthened, strengthened, because the kuffar around them were living with a purposeless, aimless life. 
They used to live in order to earn the money, the merchandise, to become rich, to be, to be able to have power and authority on earth, to be able to oppress others. That's what people do up to today. Those who don't have faith at all, what is their aim in life? Their aim in life is to earn, to become recognized, to become powerful, to have a luxurious life, and then to have a say in the lives of the others. That's what it's all about today for those who don't believe. But those who believe, they will earn. The more they get, the more humble they become. The more you find them in the house of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more charitable they are, subhanallah. The more they get, the closer they become to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, I bestowed upon you so much. Can't you do this and that without worrying about other people? You do it for my sake. Some people hide their Islamic identity. But you're a multi-millionaire. Why do you need to hide the identity? Proclaim it. I'm a Muslim, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, under the threat of persecution, they were proudly Muslim. With us, the weakness is such that with no such persecution, we are still sometimes in a jam. Whereby? We are shy to proclaim our Islamic identity or even a name. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. There is a lot of goodness in the ummah. There is a lot of goodness in the ummah. And we have a lot of hope regarding the youth and the, the members of this ummah. Inshallah, if we can tackle shaitan, we will be able to see the fruit of the beauty of all of us. Never underestimate a single individual, no matter who he is. He could be so close to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may love him way beyond his love for you and I. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So going back to this beautiful point of the Quran, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when verses were revealed, they were the first who, who supported in such a way that they would sacrifice anything to defend Islam and the Muslims and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi above all. Subhanallah. I give you an example. The time of the Isra and the Mi'raj, when the kuffar of Quraysh told Abu Bakr that, you know what, would you believe it if a person says that he went from here to Baytul Maqdis, from Baytul Maqdis up to the seven heavens, from the seven heavens he came down and they described everything for him and he came back. When he heard that your friend is saying that, he said, if my friend is saying that, I believe it. Allahu Akbar. Initially, obviously, you didn't know who's saying it. So is it possible? Humanly, we would probably think it's not possible. But for the Nabi of Allah, what's not possible? Subhanallah. By the help of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the power of Allah. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, you know, in our terms, he would put his head on the block to say, listen, if he said it, it's done. By that, today, when we talk about him, subhanallah, only a hypocrite, can dislike him or detest him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu ala Muhammad. And Abu Bakr radiallahu an. may Allah be pleased with him and all the companions and may Allah be pleased with every one of us. So what is it that they used to do that Allah chose them to be companions for? It is one main quality that the bulk of the Sahaba who were not hypocrites had. What was it? It was listening and obeying immediately. That's it. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ They said, we have heard and we have obeyed. Forgive us, O Allah, for indeed we are going to return to you. I give you one or two examples because time is limited. And Every time we hear the examples, think of ourselves. I must think of myself. When Allah's instruction comes, suit you or don't suit you? What is your reaction to it? Your reaction to it will determine whether you shall be a companion of Muhammad in the hereafter or not. May Allah forgive our weakness. We are very weak. The example is an example of business. Business at that time, a lot of it had to, was rotating around alcohol, right? 
So they used to buy alcohol, they used to pride themselves in the types of alcohol, that the brews that they had, and this man could make this brew, and that one could do it this way, and this one had that which was, you know, quickly intoxicating, and the other one had the one that tasted so good, and so on. And they prided themselves in this type of statement. And at the same time, they used to make a lot of money out of it. And this is why when, the, when they started asking Muhammad sallallahu the intelligent from amongst them, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they are asking you about two things. They are asking you about intoxicants and gambling, gambling like the lottery, etc. Tell them that there is a great sin in both of them, but there is some benefit. What is the benefit? Well, if you were to do business, you would make a lot of money out of it. It doesn't make it right, but you would make a lot of money. So the, the second part of the verse says, tell them that the sin of the two is far greater than the benefit of the two. Immediately, the intelligent from amongst the Sahaba, they quit it because they knew someone's telling you, look, there's good and bad. The good is far more Sorry, the, the good is far less than the bad. If you have a brain, what would you think? Hey, you know what, if the bad is more than the good, let me quit it. What do I need it for? I don't need it. Sometimes we have a lot of wealth, subhanAllah. And for a small deal, we make a big noise out for, for that. And we end up with the test of Allah. We fail because we were greedy. That's all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and strengthen us. I know maybe I shouldn't be actually saying that example, but because this goes global, we have to give the example. Here in this country, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease and goodness, and may Allah facilitate for us from His mercy, the sustenance that He has written for us, and may He write for us that which is good for us. Amen. So sometimes we fail. At that time, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, do you know what they did? They didn't fail. They understood, a lot of them understood, the intelligent ones, look, let's quit it. After that, another verse was revealed to say, while you are in the state of intoxication, don't be drunk, meaning don't drink and then come for salah. That's what it is. While you are in the state of intoxication, don't come for salah. So you have to drink if you wanted to at an odd hour. Another group of companions of the Prophet ﷺ understood that that means it's very bad. The third type, when, when the prohibition came, they didn't think, hey, I'm going to lose a lot of money. This is going to happen. Hey, this thing tasted nice. Hey, this guy was addicted. The other guy was this and that. No excuse whatsoever. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ the verse came down, are you going to quit it for the sake of Allah? They said, we have quit it, we have quit it. It's over. Within a split second, that is what made them so honorable in the eyes of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were sahaba radiallahu anhu. I gave you one example. The same applies to riba. For example, usually when it was prohibited, they dropped it. The same applies to salah. When it was prescribed, they did it wholeheartedly. There were no people who were not there. No people who were not there. They were all there, subhanAllah. They did it wholeheartedly. They were companions. Those are the footsteps we should be following. And therefore, I'd like to tell you that, you know what? If we would like to be companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the akhirah, let's develop a quality. Whenever you hear the verses of Allah, and whenever you hear the sayings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should immediately lend an ear and try your best to follow it as best as you can. You will never go wrong. Because even Muhammad sallallahu says, I leave with you two things. For as long as you hold fast upon them, you will never be astray. What are they? The Quran, the word of Allah, and my sunnah, my way. Obviously, we have to look into what the ulama have taught and look into whatever has come down over the generations in order to understand the verses of the Quran and the Ahadith. Because sometimes if you read a verse, I read a verse, yes, the bulk of the verses are quite easily understood. But a question begins to appear in our minds regarding something we may have read. Go and ask those with knowledge if you don't understand. That's what we are taught. But you need to feel something. Hey, I'm feeling very uneasy. 
because this is the Prophet ﷺ statement and I'm doing something else. I'm feeling very uneasy because this is the Quran that Allah has revealed and I'm doing something else. You don't need to participate in that which is wrong. You don't need to engage in haram to be happy because if you do, it brings about sadness. The owner of happiness is telling you, discipline your life and you shall see goodness not only in this life, but even in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who learn a lesson from the lives of the illustrious companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us follow their footsteps. May Allah strengthen us and protect us from shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our shortcomings and grant goodness to the entire ummah. Brothers and sisters of ours are suffering across the globe in Burma, in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in, in Yemen, in so many places, places we know, places we don't know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant ease to all of them as well as ease to every one of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayki.